So here we are in the uh, Plymouth City Council Leaders Office, otherwise known as my kitchen. I can prove that by showing you the cooker, the dishwasher, my lunch, computer, headset. This is Tudor Evans, the leader of Plymouth City Council. Now we need to do more to support our local fishing industry because the, the prices are on the floor. Right so give me an update on the latest for our small businesses in Plymouth. Evan Tudor is now joining. All right. Tell me what it's like running a city uh, from your kitchen. It, it is quite tricky, to be honest with you. 78% of the council staff are now working from home. And how many people is that, roughly? 2,080. Wow. By this evening, I'll have had 38 meetings. Thank you. I was just wondering whether or not you will make sure that the government understand that we're not some stopgap as local government. That you are seeing it. now the local government at its best, but after 10 years of cuts, you know, local government's not got a lot of fat on it, mate. I might have, but everybody's stretched to the limit. And now we've got this crisis. It's been a hell of a long day uh, today. It's tough. It's different. You're looking concerned, but not grim. So that's good. We met Tudor Evans in real life back in 2016. We're making it happen. A regeneration plan, all new, all this housing and its ambition and its global. Keep going. Eastern Seaboard. Well, I'm going to show you this. Well, no, this is about the ocean. This is about outreach. This is about going abroad. This back then, his energy and optimism in the face of big challenges seemed to embody the values of the city he runs. That global reach and confidence. We're going back to our roots with this anywhere but Westminster and making a film about a single place, Plymouth. Over the years, we've come up with a kind of model for what Eddie Webb at Westminster is all about. I wonder over there. First thing is to go somewhere most of the media ignores. This is a city with a fascinating past, present and arguably future. Plymouth's got a population of around a quarter of a million people. Hit the high street and start speaking to total strangers. Excuse me, uh, we work for the Guardian, the newspaper. I'm not really interested. Okay. That's a bit curt. Persevere. Let's go further up the street. Excuse me. Oh, It'll take one minute. Eventually, the beauty of chance face to face encounters will start to reveal itself. How do you each think Plymouth is doing? Um, I get the feeling that it's, it's on the up. You know, Plymouth is up, but there's a homeless population. I'm out begging to get yeah. money to feed myself, and this kind just lady's bought, just, just bought, bought me a sandwich a <laughs> and a drink. So you're not friends, you've just met? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah, we are. She just came over to me and said, Do you want to be friends for five minutes? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Plymouth made a real impression on us. I like it here personally. We've decided to come back the only way we can. What can you see? So you've got me on one side, yeah? And you've got your web browser on the other. You're on the side of the window and I've got my Facebook page here. Christ, are we going to give this a go then, yeah? <laughs> Tell the viewers what we're about to try. Our approximation of, of Vox popping in lockdown. Twitter's like the high street, right? I don't think Twitter's like the high street. I think Twitter's like some mad pub. <laughs> well, I think Facebook. Everything Plymouth, UK. A group for anything Plymouth. Tilly's Beauty Rooms. That'll do. Thinking a film of life under lockdown. Registered beekeeper. That's good. Jar, Plymouth Zero Waste Shop. I've got a woman here who loves sunsets. Anybody, fine. I'll talk to anybody, me. <laughs> <laughs> My computer's really slow. This is nice. rubbish. <laughs> Come on, Kevin. Any... I've had a reply. Have you? I've had a yes, I guess. <laughs> Who's that from? She's the woman who posts sunsets. Right. S send her the link. If this works even once, I'll be amazed. Jackie's here. Hi. Hi. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> You've caught me on the hop a bit. No, you caught us on the hop. We're amazed this has worked. Oh, um, right. Okay. <laughs> What does the city feel like? It's a bit eerie. It's a little bit like if we were taken over by zombies. You're walking in a street that you know really well, but you're just wary all the time. I don't like it. I'm on furlough at the moment. Are you? Um, I work in a theatre and my whole life is entertainment and looking after bands and acts, and I'm absolutely going berserk. So this is my way of coping, because I've been able to see every sunset, every sunrise for the last month. And today, how would you say you were? Um, but OK today. I'm having a good day today, because I had a good sunset last night. Just caught it, and it just went in a flash. It was like, there, gone. 
One area of Plymouth's economy that's in dire strait as a result of COVID-19 is the fishing industry. Coming away, all nice and fresh fish. <laughs> it's difficult. You know, we're a good 50% down on, on a turnover for, for the prices. And we're a while off from getting any money in from the government. You know, we need to make it work. We've got bills going out. Caught you. Hey! We got him, but we haven't got your mic chewed on. People in the city have started Call for Fish, a website that connects fish merchants with customers all over the country. There we are. Hey! I've just ordered some more fish. <laughs> We need some footage of you cooking the fish. Now, you said that it's was... It's online. It's online, Where's... man. Now, I've got this uh, monkfish, a fish taco, spaghetti, clams, and a crab sauce. Tudor is publicising it with his own with online cookery just, spots. Just cuttlefish uh, ink pasta. We think the cuttlefish probably originated, it was caught in, uh, off Plymouth, and it went to Italy, um, where they made it into the pasta, and uh, we got we brought it back home. We, and that's gorgeous. Oh, by the way, it's time to remember, call for fish. This is getting very exciting. Am I right in saying that the fish trade in Plymouth is having a difficult time at the moment? Fish prices generally are on the floor. So it's a huge income loss. Oh, so this is kind of, what this is doing is helping the merchants to get at least some of the money they would have got from restaurants and supermarket chains. You get it delivered to your door, man. It's brilliant. Well, let's get back on it with these virtual Vox Pops. Here we go. We're making a film. Whoa, here we go. Can you turn your phone around or whatever so your horizontal wire is tall? Oh, yeah. Instead of walking down the street, we've just been rummaging through Facebook all day. Try to find yeah. int interesting Plymouthians. I feel yeah. so interesting right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's just been really busy since then. It's growing and growing. We, we just this week started offering um, veg boxes from a local farm. Um, I'm hoping that will lead to long-term change. We, we've definitely got a lot of new customers that have never shopped with us before. As a plumbing and gas service and company, it's it's dead. I've set myself up as a limited company for the, the improvement of locally adapted bees. And there's a bit of a sideline. There we go. <laughs> for my own personal and mental health, I can put myself the back of this shed and just forget about everything. Have the bees benefited from the changing environment? Or... Well, yeah, the, the fact that everyone's sort of locked down, there's less people on the roads, there's less people out cutting the grass, council are doing less, they're benefiting from the wildflowers. What do you make of the way the government's handling all this? I think they have done really the best that any government would do, whether it was a Conservative government or a Labour government. Out of interest, did, did, you, did you vote for them? Did you... I vote for Conservatives? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no I didn't. You're involved with the theatre in Plymouth, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah. Young Company are doing a coronavirus time capsule. You must stay at home. Yes! I'm looking forward to sort of looking back on it, showing my kids this is what we did in lockdown. This is <laughs> just seeing how well we all sort of caught in it. This is a very important thing that they're doing at the moment i just think it opens up a whole new world and maybe that's how people get to release themselves you know through the arts i'm really struggling to fit one in and i feel absolutely terrible about it so many amazing characters have sent stuff to us guy who cleans ovens and sings he's doing facebook lives now <coughs> A pro basketball player is now delivering food for the vulnerable. The restaurateur who's going around all the key workers in the city, providing them free meals. But I think we've got to go to Becky, the nurse, now. So I'm off to work now, um, leaving my family behind in lockdown. Um, going to say goodbye to the kids, but I know I'm just going to want to crawl in there and go back to sleep with them. But unfortunately, there's work to be done. Becky is a nurse at Derriford Hospital in Plymouth. Yeah, I'll see you later. I'm going to work, OK? Bye, Mum. Bye, love you. It's good to work. You too. My chunk of cheese. Like nurses around the country, she volunteered to work with COVID-19 patients as soon as the crisis hit. Um, can you just sort of tell us what you do? So I specialise in uh, chronic migraine and um, cluster headaches. So I do Botox and epidurals into people's heads all day long. 
Um, so I've moved to a completely unfamiliar area. Wow. Okay. And then so now, since I guess what, four, five, six weeks ago, what work are you yeah. doing now? So my face-to-face -face clinics had to be stopped because of the lockdown. So I volunteered to go to the red zone and I basically just visited the first COVID positive ward manager and said, where do you want me? And she said, well, we're really struggling with communicating with family members. So I've been able to get the, um, the iPads down here and facilitate Zoom um, com conversations, which is completely, I mean, who would imagine you would say goodbye to your husband via Zoom? But actually, it's worked really well. and We've had such amazing feedback from families. We had that moment um, a few weeks ago with one of our patients who you helped enormously with him reconnect with his family before he passed away. Yep. His family have written something for you. Okay. Would you be able to forward our deepest thanks and gratitude to all the staff from Broadton who cared for Ian in his last few hours of life? In particular, Becky and Charlotte, who arranged for the Zoom conference yesterday afternoon, which has left us with such precious memories. They were so patient in helping us to make the connection when we were struggling with the technology. They epitomised the superb staff at Derriford who, look after Ian, who looked after Ian and cared for him so diligently. You are all heroes and deserve the total respect of the nation. And they also emailed me and they said, after all of this, they'd like to meet us and say thank you in person, all right? You did a really good job and I want you to keep that. This has gone through all the heads at the hospital, the chief exec, and that you did that. Anything coming back from your Facebook? No, I haven't got any messages back. I mean, a good day's rocks popping is when you get seven or eight and we're almost there. We often stick our heads in hairdressers and beauty salons. We do, don't we? We've done good interviews in nail bars. Yeah. With your clients, they're almost like, fr you see them sometimes more than friends. Um, you friends and your family, so, you and you know all about their life, they know about you. So yeah, it is really hard because it would be, um, it's a very social job. For me, my job is contact with people, so I just can't work. I've seen videos of people putting their hands through people's doors. Uh, <laughs> right, let's be clear here. There are videos of people paying someone a visit and what and they and they put their hands through the letterbox and do their nails. Yeah, but that's not for me. And will your business survive this, do you think? Um, I don't know really because I literally do not know what the future holds. Like I I'd never thought of that about the sort of contact element, you know, the very yeah, things, no. the very things that were supposed to be the saviour of the high streets. And God knows exactly. we've, we've, we've talked a lot about high streets over the years. Yeah, exactly. exactly it. I, I hadn't processed that barbers, hairdressers, nail places, beauty salons, right? Charity shops. They're all hit hardest. Meanwhile, what's doing well? Warehouses, Amazon. Jeff Bezos is just getting richer and richer and richer. Is it Alex? Me. Hello. Right, we're just on our way to some of our houses. Um... The government has said that anyone who is homeless needs shelter during lockdown, Hello. meaning that temporary accommodation is more in demand than ever. So where we would normally have a, a cyclical motion of, of um, people moving in, out, in and out of our temporary accommodation every three months, that, that, isn't, that isn't happening, which means the rooms are getting blocked up, which means we're having to take on new properties. Um, so at, at the moment, people can't move out of temporary accommodation. Most people can't move out of temporary accommodation, right? Yeah, yeah. most people, yeah, I'd say 95 to 99%. Wow. One of Alex's clients is Nigel, who because of the surge in demand for housing is in his second accommodation in two months. As you can tell, this is my room. So excuse the mess straight away. Tell me where you were at and where you were living six weeks ago before the lockdown happened and how your life has changed. Oh God, it's um, it's been a whirlwind. I was uh, a carer uh, for somebody, and um, they asked me to leave, and so I uh, sofa surfed for a while. And you think, well, hang on a minute, I just wanted to slow down and just rebalance myself and everything. So you were sofa surfing. You went to get yeah. help. You were put in temporary accommodation with twenty-four hour staff, and then because of the lockdown, you had to move again. Then into where you are now. Yeah. Where, I wonder, where are you? Go, do you have a sense of where you're going to live as and when the lockdown's lifted? 
No, because uh, this is only temporary anyway. This was only meant to be for three months. This, this is where I'm going to be. This is, at the moment, this is... How, mm -hmm. I don't really plan any futures or anything like that. I'm more of a go-with-the-flow sort of guy. You know that somewhere, somewhere along the line, somebody's going to go and pull the ladder from underneath you. The lockdown has, has demanded that... that as a society, we, we treat homeless people better, right? In the sense that homeless people have had to be given shelter, right? Yeah, I hope so. I don't think it's going to be a bit odd going back to a world where we say, well, sorry, these rules have now been withdrawn and you've, you've got to be homeless again. Well, I, I hope it doesn't. As long as it's documented and as long as enough people know that this is what is possible in a crisis, then why can it not continue? I don't want to go back to the world that we had six weeks ago. No, me neither. Darth Vader. <laughs> oh, I'm really stressed. Do you need me on camera? Yes, please. Oh, God. I'm in the room. I'm sorry I'm so stressed. Uh, um, this is huge. An authority like mine that's going to have spent, you know, 60 million quid, sorry, um, 30 million quid and lost income of about the same. I mean, that's all money that's not um, available to deploy in the usual place in local economies which is a government that knows that local government has to lead the recovery. But it hasn't yet worked out how it'll fund that. There's still squabbles going on between left and right in the Tory party over that. And until that war is done, then we still won't know where we are. So um, that's why I'm a bit stressed. Today is the 28th of April, that was 11 o'clock. We just observed our minute silence on Braunton Ward for um, all of our healthcare professionals that we've lost since the COVID start, the outbreak. Do you have a sense of the future for you and for this condition and what life might be like in three or four months time? Oh, I'm thinking years, to be honest. That's my opinion. I mean, going back to the numbers in terms of Plymouth, I'm really fearful about that because we've had the lowest figures in the country and now they're starting to relax things, I think we'll be hit massively. Um, I'm really worried that, you know, our spike is yet to come. That's just how I feel about it. This thing that you either get explicitly or you sort of sense from Tory government of we're all in this together, well, it either turns out to be window dressing for the complete reverse, or it doesn't last very long. If you talk to people who, who run cities and counties and boroughs and all that, a lot of them sense this prospect of just being once again cut adrift. The point is, for, 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 for years, we've, we've looked at the ways in which communities are trying to bounce back and look after themselves, right? The community spirit here of late has been amazing. Meds have been dropped off to people, free parcels have been dropped off, the neighbourhood watch have been amazing, those coming round in outfits to keep the kids cheery. The whole community has just pulled together and it has been something else. I'm proud to live here. The strong sense of place that people have discovered in places like Plymouth, it needs to be backed up by government action. Yeah, it needs exactly. And powers and money. The trumpet-based piece of music you've heard throughout this episode is Lament, composed by Simon Dobson. Tell me about the mood you were in when you wrote the piece. I was thinking about my, my, my career and the, the scene in the town, and I think I definitely felt um, almost a sense of, like, like I was grieving. There's loads of money coming to the city for music and art, and everything was, it felt like everything was just about to really kick off, to be honest, and now it's not. 